Hi, it's me, Jazzy. I'm back with another tech-related video, and today it's mailbag time. Yep, there's plenty of random boxes here that need opening up, so let's grab a few and get them over on the bench. Right, here we go. Now, this one's a viewer submission. So this was sent in by viewer Mike. So many thanks for sending this in. I always appreciate anyone taking the time to send me stuff to have a look at. And I'm always intrigued to take a look at tech stuff. So let's have a look in here. Let's see what we've got. It's very well wrapped. Okay, this is a little signal generator. Here we go. So we've got a little cable here. Looks like USB-C to A. And little signal generator here. Let's have a look. Okay. Ah, yes. I've got some of these connectors. Ah, oh, fantastic. Okay. Oh, this is cool. Little sandwich of PCBs. This is an ADF4351. Apparently is 35 megahertz to 4.4 gigahertz. That's fantastic. And is PC controllable. So thank you very much, Mike, who describes himself as the blind tinkerer for sending that in. And there's a USB-C on the end there. I think going to have great fun. We'll do a little episode on this and we'll have a play around with this and see what we can get out of it. It's intriguing. I like the fact you can hook it up to your PC as well. That's really cool. I'm thinking this is endless possibilities here. So we've got RF out there and we've got our clock. I love the fact that goes up to 4.4 gigahertz. That's amazing. I haven't got anything here that goes above 70 meg, which is the advanced E1 valve signal generator that I've got. So this is going to be very, very useful. So I think we'll do a little mini episode on this and we'll hook it up and see what it can do and see what the PC software does. Intriguing. Hmm. I like. Okay going to have fun with that. Thank you, Mike, for sending that in. Always appreciate anyone that takes the time to send stuff into the channel. So some of the stuff in this mailbag I don't need to unbox because some of these things we had to go and pick up. And this was one of them. This is a Solatron 7150 plus digital multimeter. Now, big fan of Solatron multimeters. So over here, I've got this Solatron 7045. I've had that for quite a while and it's never let me down and it's one of the most accurate meters I've got. This, in theory, should be even more so. I believe this is a six and a half digit multimeter and I think you can change the amount of digits with the button there that's completely missing. This actually came with another one. So we've got a source of parts. Now, I'd like to get the 7150 plus up and running if possible because it's got more digits. It's a slightly more uprated version of the 7150. This is still a good meter. Neither of these work. This is missing some bits. I would like to try and use some of the parts from the 7150 to get the 7150 plus up and running. This is going to be a bit of a project, but in theory, I should be able to make one out of the two. Plus, having two, I can compare. It's always handy having another one. So you can see that with the Plus model, we've got extra goodies down here going on. You can do external trigger and stuff. Otherwise, it's pretty much the same. I'm going to need the mains filter replacing. This one has let go at some point, and that one's probably not far behind it. But big fan of Solatron stuff. It's going to need the caps replacing. It's going to need the input filter replacing and I think it may just be a case of transplanting the buttons from this one to this one because I'm told that this used to work I think the previous owner stopped using it because the filter on one of these let go and they just didn't want to use them anymore I mean they are getting a bit long in the tooth but with a bit of love this will be if I can get one of these up and running this will be my most accurate meter and that's great to have an accurate base to compare figures the more data you've got the more accurate measurements you can get so yeah really pleased with these not mega money either 
So happy about that. Right, let me show you what else has just arrived here recently. Another thing I won't have to unbox is this. Oh my goodness, this is massive. Right, this is a Tektronix 7603 oscilloscope. It's absolutely huge. And apparently it doesn't work. Brilliant, that's just what I need. Another oscilloscope that doesn't work. But it was cheap, very cheap actually. 20 pounds, I think. Probably cost more in fuel to get there to pick it up. Why do I buy these things? I buy them because secondhand test gear is getting so expensive. So every time I see one that's a potential project, I just get it if I can afford it. Because it gives me a, a nice little backlog of stuff that I can be working on. And I love these old Tektronix scopes. So we've got three plugins in here. So we've got dual trace amplifiers, two of, and I've got a time base. So these can be replaced with different plugins. Yeah, there's there's multiple projects in one here because each of these plugins is going to need some love. The power supply for the entire chassis is going to need some love and the oscilloscope section itself. So yeah, this is a more of a long term project. I'm not looking to do anything with this anytime soon. I'm just going to hang on to this and it'll eventually make its way to the top of the queue. As I say, with the prices of test gear these days, if I see a bargain, I grab it. Next up, it's another eBay one, delivered by Every. This is one I bought that needs possibly a repair. It is in bubble wrap, but that's just like sticking out. Mm. To have a to have a word with the particular eBay seller on this one. At least it gives me an idea of what it is. The only multimeter I've bought recently off of eBay is a fluke and it's quite an old one got it quite cheap because the guys had some problems with it it's not reading right uh, whether it's one i can fix i don't know but i'll have a go as it was so cheap oh it's really filthy this wow this needs decontaminating <laughs> I'm sure this will clean up. I can use some of that foaming cleanser. I'm going to have to go and sanitise my hands after looking at this. But they could have packed the probes a little bit better. That's quite bad. Okay. I mean, it all looks all right. It's all there. It's just really filthy, isn't it? Yuck. <laughs> it's got any batteries in it? No. Yes. Yes, actually. I'm going to take the probes out. Okay. He said it wasn't stable, it was wandering about all over the place. Let's just try it with some, let's put it on DC. So that should be reading 60 volts, it's reading 21.5. So yeah, there's definitely some sort of weird issue with this then. Interesting. Yeah, okay. No, it's not happy, is it? Okay, well, it was only cheap. I didn't pay a lot for it. I'll see if I can do anything with it. So I'll strip it down at some point and have a look and see if I can figure out what's wrong with it. But at the price, it was cheap enough to take a risk on it. If I can fix it, then it's an absolute bargain. If not, never mind. I tried. <laughs> Sometimes it's worth taking a punt on stuff when it's really, really cheap. Okay, here we go. Here's one to open. Right, what have I got in this one? This will be another eBay job. I seem to have lost my little Stanley knife. I don't, I've no idea. I can't find it anywhere in the studio. I've put it down somewhere and goodness knows where it's ended up. So, um, reduced to scissors, which is not ideal. It'll do the job. Get myself another Stanley knife. I've had that one ages. I'm disappointed that I've lost. I bet it will turn up somewhere really weird. Can't even remember the last time I had it. It'll turn up when I don't need it, won't it? What's in this one? Oh, look, this is good packaging. Oh, look at this. This is well wrapped. 
Come on, even Defcon would approve of that. What have we got? It's definitely something blue. I didn't buy any more timer clocks, did I? It's been a busy couple of weeks here, so I've not really kept track of what I've got turning up. Very well wrapped. I passed the parcel, this. Oh yes. Oh this this is quite amusing actually. Well it's an oscilloscope. It's pretty old. It's pretty rough. It cost me six pounds. Six pounds for an oscilloscope. No one else bid on it. I can't think why. Why did they not? Did this come with a free spider? Did I just see a spider walking across the top? That spider's come from other parts. Well, the good news is this is a Type 400, which is fantastic. Type 400 what? I'm not sure. Do you know what? What struck me about this was how it looks like the Tektronics, but tiny. There's your on off. We've got various things here. Focus, Y shift, X shift. There's your trigger settings. Oh, everything's a bit gummed up. Sensitivity doesn't even turn. This is going to need a bit of work. I wonder if we can get it running. Oh, it's going to need a look inside and I hope there's no more spiders. So yeah, a lot of these feel really gummed up. Some of them are okay. This has been in storage for a long time. I wonder how old this is. It was made by Microcell Electronics Camberley, Surrey, England. Oh, I know where that is. I went there once. It's pretty rough, but I kid you not when I tell you I paid six pounds for this, plus a bit of postage. The postage wasn't even a lot for this. I mean, it's not mega heavy like the Tektronix. You would call this a more portable scope. I presume this is the power connector. This is pretty non-standard, but we can change that. We are gonna do a, we'll do a teardown on this, do a teardown episode and have a look inside, see what's what. I see a sticker here that says 06, 79 so it gives me a bit of a clue i don't know if that was made in 1979 or checked in 1979 i don't know is there anything on the bottom of it oh it's a little stand look oh look at that it's got a little cute stand that looks cool with that little stand looks like a 1960s television i think that's really cool this is the kind of project that makes me happy because i'll be restoring this just for the pleasure of it. It's just cool and it was very, very cheap and it will give me a lot of enjoyment and hopefully I'll be able to make some cool videos about it as well. So that's another one for the queue and it takes up a lot less space than that Tektronix one. Right, as always, I've saved the biggest for last and this is something I've been wanting for a while. Now, I saw this on a eBay sellers page and it was recently reduced in price which has now made it affordable enough for me to get which is fantastic because quite often a lot of this stuff's well out of my price range now this is a fantastic bench multimeter I know we looked at those other Solatrons earlier this is in a whole different league it's another Solatron, but this is the biggie. I'm missing a little bit of trim on the side there, but that's kind of reflected in the price I paid. I think it was probably rack mounted. That would explain why the trim is missing. So this is the Solatron 7060 voltmeter. Now, this is not just any 7060, this is the 7060G, which is the top one, which means it does true RMS on AC volts. It also does DC volts, it does current, and it does resistance. This is fantastic. This is a true six and a half digit multimeter. So this is going to be a cut above even those 7150s that I took a look at earlier. Now, I'd already bought the 7150s when I saw this, 
and I've been looking for one of these for a while. I want a really good reference meter for checking voltages and will aid to the accuracy of some of my testing that I do here. Now I do have off to the side here that are usually buried behind a ton of stuff. I've got some Datron 1065s. I've got two of them here. Now these need a bit of work before they're going to be any good to power up because they've been in storage for quite some time but they are fantastic meters and this is in the, in a similar kind of league. I've always had a bit of a soft spot for Solatron stuff. Now this one does work, it does power up. It's not been fully tested by the seller but they did power it up and it was shown working and what I paid for it was still quite a lot, pretty much top end of my budget that I'm willing to pay for test gear, but because this was reduced, it was just about affordable for me. So I'm hoping it doesn't need a massive amount of work. I will replace the input filter as I do with all my new secondhand test gear, because those things letting go is unpleasant. It should be okay, but it will need checking out. Obviously I'll check the caps, I'll, I'll have the covers off and check it all out first before I try and power this on, just in case. So we've got a little cover here, look, over the front terminals. That's quite nice, isn't it? So yeah, we've got the option to do four wire measurements on this. That is very cool. This is a really good bit of kit, this. I am really chuffed with this. Once this is up and running, I'll make a video on it when I strip it down and check it over. Let's have a look around the back of this thing. This, ah. So around the back, we've got quite a lot going on around the back here. Plenty of connectivity and this is the magic bit that I was looking for on all of these that I've seen for sale. The fact it's 7060G, which is the top one. There were several different variants of this and the G is the one to go for. If you're looking out for a 7060, this should be a cheaper input filter to replace because this is not one that's got the fuse and everything built in. The fuse is separate on this. That's good news. So yeah, definitely we'll be replacing that. That'll keep me busy for a while sorting that out, but it shouldn't need much work at all, this one. If I get this up and running, it'll spur me on to get my Datrons up and running. So there you go. I reckon that's a, a great end to this episode of Mailbag Time. There we go the Solatron 7060G. Well, quite a varied mailbag there, quite a lot of really useful equipment that I'll be using on the channel. So there will be some repair videos coming up on some of those items. I must say a big thanks to Mike for sending me in this little signal generator. I look forward to taking a look at that in a bit more detail. So just a quick update on the Fluke multimeter. As you can see, I've given it a bit of a clean up. It's looking a lot better. It was really, really filthy. All I've done is put a fresh batch in it and cleaned up the terminals and it does seem to be behaving itself but it is very out on the DC volts range so maybe we can take a look at that in a future episode and do a bit of calibration on it. So there's still bargains to be found out there on auction sites like eBay if you shop carefully. I'm always looking around for a bargain bit of test gear, as you know. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's mailbag video. As always, massive thanks to everyone for watching, sharing, liking and subscribing. And big thanks to all my YouTube and Patreon members. Don't forget, you can support me on Patreon and buy me a coffee, which helps to support the channel and keeps me making more videos. I'll be back soon with another tech related video. But in the meantime, Take care and I'll see you on the next one.